Alaska, a state known for its immense wealth and unparalleled natural beauty, also holds the distinction of being one of the most sparsely populated and dangerous states in the United States. This paradoxical nature makes Alaska a place many might hesitate to call home for an extended period. Alaska stands out as the largest state in the United States, with an area of 1,723,340 square kilometers, yet it is distinctly isolated from the other 48 contiguous states. Its vast landscape is home to over 100 active volcanoes and extreme weather conditions, contributing to its notably low population density of just 1.23 people per square mile. The geographic and climatic challenges, characterized by its proximity to the North Pole and surrounded by expansive glaciers, further exacerbate the population scarcity. The Malaspina Glacier, the largest in Alaska, spans an impressive 2 2,001 square kilometers. Additionally, Alaska boasts approximately 3,190 officially recognized lakes and over 3 million unnamed ones. With 35% of its territory covered by forests, many of which are protected lands owned by state or federal governments, large swaths of Alaska remain uninhabitable. Unlike the typical 12-hour daylight experienced in most places, Alaska's summers can see up to 22 hours of sunlight a day, earning it the nickname, the land of the midnight sun. This unique phenomenon adds to the state's unmatched natural beauty and is a prime viewing spot for the aurora borealis. Despite its stunning landscapes, Life in Alaska presents significant human challenges. The state has the highest rate of sexual crimes in the United States, with 134 cases per 100,000 residents reported in 2022 alone. Combating sexual crime in Alaska is a significant challenge for the government. The state's small, organized communities are not adequately supported by law enforcement, making it difficult to address and reduce these crimes effectively. Alaska's vast and isolated geographic layout significantly hinders law enforcement's ability to quickly investigate sexual crimes. It can take days or even hours to probe just a single case. Most victims of sexual crimes are male, and regrettably, many are reluctant to report the incidents they endure. Additionally, a substantial number of the victims of violence are minors. Beyond the dangers of sexual crimes, Alaska is also a perilous place due to its high incidence of murders, particularly affecting women. Compared to other U.S. states, the female mortality rate in Alaska is 5.14 per 100,000 women. Over the past decade, Alaska has consistently ranked first or second in the United States for murder cases. Studies have shown that the death rate among women in Alaska is predominantly among Native American or indigenous women which is seven times higher than that of white women in the state. The exact factors contributing to Alaska's high mortality rate are not fully understood. However, the state's relatively low law enforcement effectiveness has allowed murder cases to proliferate. Drug and alcohol abuse are also believed to be significant factors leading to violence and death in the community. Furthermore, poverty, lack of education, and limited access to healthcare services exacerbate the situation. Indigenous communities face numerous challenges that worsen the incidence of crime. Amidst the challenges of addressing crime within the state, the U.S. government faces a new dilemma. President Joe Biden previously approved a significant oil drilling project in Alaska named the Willow Project. The Willow Project is a controversial oil drilling endeavor in Alaska's North Slope by ConocoPhillips, a major American energy company, which has faced protests from environmental activists. Despite these protests, the U.S. Department of the Interior has persisted in granting ConocoPhillips permission to drill for oil in three locations within Alaska's National Petroleum Reserve. This decision comes as a surprise to many, as during the 2020 campaign, Biden had promised not to permit new oil and gas drilling in the area. This move has ignited debate over the balance between energy development and environmental protection, particularly in a region as ecologically sensitive as Alaska. 
Recently, Alaska's lawmakers approved the Willow Project, attracted by the promise of an $8 billion investment expected to generate thousands of jobs and produce 180,000 barrels of oil per day, totaling approximately 576 million barrels over 30 years. This development has sparked protests from environmental activists concerned about preserving Alaska's natural habitats, home to wildlife populations including caribou and polar bears. Critics argue that the project could have detrimental long-term effects on the planet. According to Wellgood, the project is projected to produce 239 million metric tons of CO2, equivalent to the carbon emissions of 30 million homes in a year. The drilling locations and surrounding areas are also at risk, with potential damage to the land and the disappearance of clean water sources, threatening the natural ecosystems that have been supportive of local wildlife and plant life. In response to the project, numerous petitions have been signed by opponents hoping for its termination. Oil mining in Alaska contributes to at least 80% of the state's revenue and accounts for about 25% of the total oil production in the United States. To gain approval and encourage residency, the Alaskan government compensates its residents through investment earnings from mineral royalties. However, the amount of this payment varies. In 2018, residents of Alaska were paid $1,600. This amount increased in 2021 to $2,072, equivalent to approximately RP 29 million per year. The requirements to qualify for these royalties are straightforward. Individuals must reside in the state for at least one year and not leave the state for an extended period. This unique approach not only incentivizes people to live in Alaska despite its challenges, but also directly benefits them from the state's natural resource exploitation. Despite the financial incentives, deciding to live in Alaska isn't a straightforward choice, primarily due to its high cost of living. It's essential to understand the expenses involved because Alaska is known for its relatively high living costs. For your information, one of the reasons many people hesitate to settle in Alaska is the high price of food and goods. Most items need to be shipped from outside, incurring additional costs. The Missouri Economic Research and Information Center ranks Alaska as the second most expensive state in the United States for groceries. For example, the viral king crab can cost about 4 million Indonesian rupiah for just 2 kilograms. Interested in giving it a try? The high cost of shipping also makes people think twice about moving to Alaska. To get there, one must traverse across Canada, adding to the expenses. On average, travel costs to Alaska by plane range between $838 and $1,273 per person. Transporting daily goods to Alaska's populous cities is more expensive than in other parts of the United States due to the distance. Most shipments require air travel, which is more costly than standard truck delivery. Many logistics companies charge extra fees for deliveries to Alaska because of its remote location. Not only is Alaska distant, but it also covers a vast area. Residents often have to drive to most places, facing the sixth highest fuel prices in the United States. Public transportation is not readily accessible due to the challenging distances and terrain. Some locations are even unreachable by car and require a plane. This remoteness also affects healthcare costs. Alaska has not only the highest healthcare costs in the United States, but also among the highest in the world. The difficulty of accessing medical professionals due to remote locations, especially for more intensive treatments, further complicates matters. The primary health insurance provider in Alaska is Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska, with Moda Assurance offering coverage in certain areas. Fortunately, Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield agreed to a 7.13% decrease in healthcare costs in 2021. One third of residents receive coverage through Medicare provided by the government, compared to having their own health insurance.